jacks to weed the things. Mm. And that's going to be where the neck is, where I'm going to break it off in a while. which is kind of a fancy little deal. <laughs> You'll see. It'll answer a lot of questions about how they finish off the bottles. And also, if you've ever dug bottles and you see a punky mark, this is how the punky mark gets there. bottles like this, but before they used the molds, people like Robert Hughes, who started Kemble Glass, and also George Mason, who did a lot with the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, they had seals made up, and they would stick it with a hot piece of glass on a bottle like this, 
so that people would know whose bottle it was, mm. and it would get returned to them. At least that was the idea. Because these were pretty expensive. The, the idea of disposable bottles was not, you know, definitely not uh, what they were thinking of it. But, uh, and it started, they started with a two-piece two mold, sort of like that one that I've done that looks like a, a Saratoga Springs water bottle that Stoddard made in the 1840s and 1850s. But they would only be able to make like 20 bottles an hour, if, and that would be with a shop of three people. And uh, a modern bottle machine would make 10,000 bottles in an hour. <laughs> same way you would on a potter's wheel kind of a thing. So it tells you when you're off and on. Did they make their own bottles down at my feet? Sometimes they turn out the lip like that. I think it was so they could tie the cork on. Because these were these are really simple, functional, you know, quick as they could do it, and I'm doing it a lot slower than, than probably they did it back in the day. But they would also have a production team. They have at least well, probably three people working on a bottle, getting it out. Wow. Each one doing a particular part, knocking it off. <laughs> 